The second I finished the dry lotus cookie and then I drank the pear soup, I was back in the Qing Dynasty. Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome to a special royal edition of Fung Rose Food. Yes, we are going to be having a Qing Dynasty Imperial Feast. We are here today with Nelson Chan for Hoopin' Life. What's poppin' everybody, man? I can't wait to eat this. I don't know if you guys remember, we did a video about royal Korean cuisine in Seoul, Korea, but we are not in China right now. We're in the 626. All right, David, we're talking about having a royal Qing dynasty feast here, you know, that is fit for anybody of like the emperor to the eunuch or, or someone else in the royal court. But what is the Qing dynasty? Nell is the best Chinese historian amongst us. The Qing dynasty is the last Chinese dynasty that ended in the early 1900s. You know, all those like classic Chinese movies and martial arts movies, that used to be what the world was like. Royal, royal Qing, Qing dynasty, dynasty cuisine, cuisine. Let's, let's go. go. Does this look like the Forbidden City or what? And I've eaten at so many Chinese restaurants in America. This is probably the closest reproduction to a spot from Beijing that yeah. I've ever been. You can see they have all the Chinese instruments up there. Types of erhus, peepas. Chef Tian from Beijing is gonna be joining us, wow. AKA Sifu. Let's eat, or as the Mandarin, Chifan. We are here with Chef Tian, ni hao. What is this called? This is called Xiao Diao Li Tang. Can you say it like a Beijing or Xiao Diao Li Tang. Yo, Nell, you knew about this drink. Because mm. I know my mom makes this drink. Is this kind of a sense of nostalgia for you? Yeah, yeah. At first I thought it was a tea, but when I drank it, I was like, yo, this tea tastes like a soup to me that I drank before. This dish is mainly for the Guan Fu dynasty. At the time, Basically, in Beijing, they would have all the top chefs from different regions of China with really different cuisines. All different flavors come together. It's just like being in the big city of LA or New York. Obviously, a lot of different chefs from all over the country or world. We're very excited to start. Cheers. Cheers. This dish is called Yu Long Xi Zhu. Because in Luoshan Ji, the weather is quite dry and the climate is the same. Beijing is very dry climate. And LA, especially where we're at, like in the San Gabriel Valley, also very dry. So he was saying, you drink this, and you eat this, and just kind of like get the moisture flowing. Whoa. Whoa. It's got a lot of flavor. Right off the bat, really flavorful. Has like a burst of like citrus flavor. You know what it reminds me of, David? Growing up, mom and dad, we would eat the jelly left over from the cold like chicken or something. Yeah, the dong. Or the fish, yeah, the dong. So it's just a tour to get Thai, you make what a... Next dish coming up. Wow, yo, look at that. Yo, what is that thing stabbed into that burrito looking like thing? Did they have this back in the Qing Dynasty? Classic Beijing style. It's not Peking duck. It's Beijing sliced smoked duck. There is different types of Beijing duck. Let's get that straight. Let's get into it. All right, the spinach sesame sauce on spinach. It's like a whole little square. It's actually a sandwich. It's got sesame sauce in the middle and then on top. Yo, that's actually really good. Mm, my God. I would have never expected to taste like that. Just spinach and sesame? That spinach was chopped up, but it wasn't too fine. Is it me, or was there like a hint of like a wasabi-like flavor in it? Yeah, but I think a little bit mustard. of Chinese hot mustard up in there. Yo, I gotta say that that was the best version of that that I've had in mm. my life. Hype, what are we, in the hospital right now? Dang, the whole thing. Let's try this. Tastes like a Shandong dish. Yeah. So even though these are kind of a mixture of different provinces in China, I do think that the most influential cuisine in the north, including Beijing, is Shandong. Are you guys ready to go on the tofu skin? Yo, man, I love tofu skins. Let's do it. Mmm. And you know what I love about this tofu skin? And, and this is gonna sound weird, but that was really tender. For tofu skin, you have to soak it in, whether yeah. it's water or like a specific type of like soup base or whatever. Maybe because it was, you know, soaked in a soup base, it had that fragrance of And maybe there was like flowers yes, in it. Yes, I do. Th yeah. I think there was a lot of cilantro, a lot of greens, maybe green onions as well. All right, man. Smoked duck. Mmm. I might have to hit it with some sauce. Boop, boop, boop. Sure, this ain't no your typical Chinese roast duck. Mmm, no. 
I think if you use this on your next bite of duck, Yo, you're not gonna regret it. Don't forget about the plate. It's in the shape of a pear. What would you say your favorite thing was on this plate? Either the tofu skins or the spinach uh, sesame. Yo, I gotta say the tofu skins. Tofu skins. I yeah. love tofu skins. Same man. Just tofu pea. Love it. Next dish. You can eat the skin. Look at how they kind of separated what? the skin from the meat of it, and it's just like this big like flour thing. I think they could have made it in the shape of a heart. Cheers, Cheers guys. guys. Crispy shrimp. The number one selling dish. Oh my god, that glaze wow. of sauce. Oh wow, bro. That was, that was the I goat would... of all shrimps. And it was definitely about separating the shell from the meat and cooking that separately. That's really like. Oh. It was a gigantic shrimp, but it didn't lose its flavor. Sometimes big shrimps. No big shrimps, yeah. They lose their flavor. They do. All right, let's uh, try these. The mushrooms. I don't even... All right, mushroom got an interesting texture. Ooh. Mm. They cut the small slits into the top of them so that the inside gets crispy, but they have battered it really lightly. Like, you know, there's a light it, powder yeah. on it. Yeah. The majority of ABCs probably didn't come from any sort of like royal lineage, um, but here we're eating royal Chinese food. It's special, and I think it's some, something that's like not everybody has to do it, but I do think that if you are interested, it's totally worth checking out. Wow, that is the littlest candle flame for a soup that I've seen. I, I don't know if everything else that we ate was super ancient because it was like a mixture of, of generations and cultures, but this, yeah, but it's just, this, this looks like it's from the Qing Dynasty for real. Okay, let's do it. Let's that adds a <laughs> That adds a whole nother side to it, man. I've made a huge mistake. That's spiced up my life. And this is the fifth one. Okay, so we're going to add the fulu. They don't put MSG in their food. That's what the food loop is for. Oh. Had a little kick. That tastes so different than when we first ate it, but it's still kind of in the same frame, but just with a whole bunch of different flavors added on. There's two different versions of this soup you can get here. There's one for men and one geared for women. And of course we got the male one. So there's oh, beef sure. tendon and fish maw in here. Obviously it's kind of hard to tell what you're eating exactly, but there's you chicken got, in this too. Mm. Yeah. yeah. This actually low key was a winner. Yeah. I mean, I can see why you like it, but I personally, not a fan of it, but not a fan of the food loop. Not a fan of the food. I never had anything like this before. Yeah, this, is right. this is for sure ancient. I like how they're giving you a different plate for each dish. Very classic Chinese banquet style. This is Mijiao Niu Liu Li. Add our own Zizhi Dou. Use tofu, the sauce. This is the sauce. This is the Mijiao Niu Liu Li. This is the Mijiao Niu Liu Li. Mmm. You get it with a little bit of this carrot sauce. So, mm. no. Eat it with the sauce. I swear to God, this was a zucchini. So this is a Bistro Nas delicacy. Definitely we're eating a fusion of dishes. That was really good. Almost tastes like a tamago. Like egg. We stepped in here expecting old Qing Dynasty food. There is definitely some of that. Mm. And there's also some of Bistro Nas' specialty dishes that they've come up with. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense because not only would you not want to eat everything that was like 100%, but you can't even recreate it anymore. No, yeah. for sure, for sure. Like, how is he gonna know? what the actual dish is gonna look and taste like. One of the owners of Bistro Na has the bloodline of one of the eight noble families that used to guard the emperor. What? Like the most entrusted inner circle. Really? So he gets to eat all the good food then? Well, yeah. he should know. I mean, wow. he should know the recipes. Some of the recipes are passed down. So that's why that's some of the recipes crazy. are very traditional, and obviously some of them are coming from him, you know, in 2018. This is So this is from Beijing, but not a traditional dish. We got 
sour, sweet, and spicy. Mm. So traditionally, Kung Pao dishes are made with peanuts, but this one is gonna be made with sweet roasted walnuts. Man, look at this piece of lobster, man. That is beautiful right there. No, I'm gotta eat the brain though. Oh. Mm. Brains, brains. No, I like the invasion. They're like willing to be playful with the food. Yeah. You know, even some Chinese Americans would be like, oh, I don't know if you could do Kung Pao lobster. But if they're doing it in Beijing, I mean. Hey, that's the center of China right now. So like if they're doing it in the center of China, it's pretty much good to go. So this is like the turned up version of the appetizer that we had before, which is the fish jelly. But now they got Hokkaido scallops, you got surf clams and tuna. Very refreshing. Tuna? This looks like steak. Uh, I thought it was a duck at first. Mmm, good. Oh, that tuna is crazy. Yeah. With the light sear on it? Yeah. Oh my gosh. That broke down in my mouth. The cool thing about the surf clams, they organized it and placed it in a shape of a fish. Surf clams nice because the surf has a very light flavor. You know how, how you have it in your mouth, right? But you really feel that kick when you swallow it because that, that hits the back and just, that pause. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that was the last savory dish that we had. Now what we did, we had a mixture of two different menus. It was a $150 one and a $58 menu. And we had select dishes from each one. Sweet paste. Wow. No other additional additives, sweeteners. Wow. It took four hours to do the pea dessert. I've uh, never tasted anything like that before. Now that's what you call yeah. sweet peas, man. This is mochi. Japanese got mochi from China. They, Japanese got mochi from China. I'm sticking by it. Yeah, I've read that before. I'm not saying that Chinese invented mochi, but mochi originally came from China. Mm. It's good, I like it a lot. Oh. This is You're gonna taste the, the black sesame first, but there's all whole types of bunch of sesame in there. With the mint on top okay. of the fire. Sesame? That's pretty good, man. Pro process over here. The reason these ancient sweets are not that sweet is because they gotta use honey, because sugar didn't exist back then. Right. Uh, so to properly replicate the dynastic experience, you can't use, you know, sugar. Right, right, right. And sugar would be an easier way to sweeten it. One of the best looking cookies I ever had, by the way. This is one of those cookies that you do need to drink a tea with. I can't believe that since we sat down, this has accompanied us through every dish. I drank like 50 cups already. Bro. Lie, you're lie, I swear, man. Yo, your voice already sounds different. Hell yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> I never felt more Chinese than just that bite. I have a Nelson, we had a meal. Okay, you Cantonese, you haven't had a lot of food like this. You, as far as you know, right, you have no northern roots. Not that I know of. So, how do you feel connecting to this food? Like, because I know you eat a lot of Cantonese food. We grew up Cantonese, right, going to Chinatown, but a lot of the time when you grow up, Thinking what's Chinese, you're just thinking Cantonese. Right, Chinatown's right, right. your world. There are some certain foods or dishes that were kind of like, you know, the Southern style. Let's just say maybe like the pear soup or even like the shrimp and the filet, you know, that's more, you know, not specifically made in a Northern area. But um, like I said, there was a bunch of crazy stuff that I eat today that I would have never thought that I would, you know, experience. I guess after eating this meal, I'm a little bit more Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with Chef Tian Sifu kind of explaining everything to me. The last time I've had that happen, was when I used to live in Beijing for a little bit. Yeah. And you got the first row seat because you know you can communicate with uh, Sifu the best. Right, right. right? And, 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 and with Chinese people in general. Obviously has ABCs that are pretty Americanized. Right. No, you're from Macau, but Macau also already westernized as a Portuguese mm -hmm. colony, yep. Hong Kong a British colony. Our dad's from Hong Kong. Our mom obviously more from a traditional place, Shandong. I just feel like it's cool to see it all. I don't like it to be like, you know, oh, you guys are acting so American. You guys are dissing one side, or you guys being nah. so fob, leaning into the ancient Chinese culture that's so un-American. I don't see it that way. Yeah. But you know the weird thing is, a lot of people do see it that way. Yeah. But I just want everybody to know I don't agree. that I don't see it that way. Yeah. Asian American, you you rep both. Yeah. You Dude, rep and, both. And I but but, but like people think when you rep both, you're you're like more. you're like a compressed spectrum. Nah. Yeah, no, nah, nah. Like you're like you're just teetering somewhere in the middle between like this side, but I'm like, I want the whole thing. Yeah. I want to be from over here all the listen, way over here. I think a lot of people 
generally think being like a Chinese American or ABC is hard. Like it's not that cool or for whatever reason, like maybe your, your parents came over from this area or whatever. But like, I think the one thing that you can do now and you can and feel good about yourself is that you get to take what you want from each culture. You get to choose. You get mixed no match. one's gonna tell you, oh, you being, you can't be this Chinese or you can't be that. I'm like, nah, if you like it and you own up to it and you thoroughly do enjoy it and you respect it, then take what you want. Like, I, I make jokes about Chinese stuff and I don't even speak Chinese that well. Like, I don't feel bad about it because I know that I like, at the end of the day, respect the culture and I will move it forward in my own way. I, I don't know if I'm gonna be teaching Mandarin classes anytime soon. <laughs> All right, maybe I'm not a Lao sure like that, <laughs> but, <Sure. laughs> but, uh, but I will do it in my own way. And that's what I feel like we kind of do on our channel, you know? Right. No, for sure, for sure. And I know our, my, our Mandarin is even bad. Like even David's is not perfect and mine is terrible sometimes. So, uh, but I'm trying, we're trying to just, when we speak Mandarin in videos or Cantonese in videos and it's not perfect, it's like, I know people roast us for it, but I'm just like, who else is speaking Mandarin and Cantonese in their videos? Like, and we're just saying right. it like it's normal because it should be normal. It shouldn't be weird. Like, you shouldn't be like, oh no, you can't speak Canto in your video now. You speak fluent Canto and yeah. you're from there. So yeah. I'm like, what's the big deal? Be the person you want to be and not what society perceives you to be, man. It's Make it normal. Like, yeah. And just like, I want to make just even coming here as an ABC who is pretty deep in the American pop culture, Normal too. I think it can be normal. You I can think have a whole span, man. I think ABC should come here. I'm not saying you gotta eat here all the time. It's kind of expensive, but and, and you know I don't know if you want to you know you want to eat at like Noodle World or like Soup Plantation or something <laughs> like that. Anyways, there's like a million other spots you might want to go to, but I think you've got to try this because especially if you're not gonna go back to Beijing or Shanghai and eat this for real, this is like the next. Hey, best this step. was. Hey, now we ain't go to Beijing yet. We all go to Beijing and make a movie, but yeah. this this is a pretty good introduction. No. Oh. Top three dishes. I'm sticking with the sesame spinach, obviously the shrimp. I, I, we know the shrimp is good. I'm going with the, with the fulu and the chicken soup. Okay. Fulu and That's the my first soup. bite of the fulu and the chicken soup. Woo! Yeah, yeah. That was wild. No? I really like the tofu skin and the appetizer plate. You know, that's something really good. I like to, uh, tofu skin. Two, the filet was really good. I like the filet. And the red bean mochi. Low key, so one thing that you guys didn't say that I really uh, enjoyed was the fish jelly. Appetizer. Oh, good. Okay. I like that. Okay, I like okay. that. Especially the second one with the uh, packed in seafood, the premium joint. That was hell. That was nice. Hey. I'm so glad you guys watched that video. I'm so glad you guys were able to experience that with us. Please let us know in the comments section below what other foods you would like us to try on Fung Bros Foods. That was a very special Imperial Royal episode. Make sure you check out Nelson on his channel, Hoopin' Life. We are in the 626 at B Short Nas, and until next time, we're out. Peace. To any ABC who's interested in going back to China, every ABC that I've ever talked to is that when they go back to Beijing, something changes a little changes bit. Changes their life a little bit. It changes their life a little bit. Like everybody has said that to me. You can go back to Shanghai, I'm not saying it won't change your life too. Maybe it does, but Beijing for sure. I think it's time to book my flight and go change my life.